Welcome to Easy Elim, Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning on Form 2 Mathematics and our topic for today is Volume of Common Solids. So we are going to be looking at the volume of a first term of a cone first. So remember we already looked at the volume of a cone. So basically we are going to look at a first term that is derived from a cone. So volume of a first term, we mentioned first term uh, before. Uh, when we were discussing uh, the surface area of a cone and the surface area of a first first term that is derived from a cone, we mentioned this. So a uh, first term is usually like a cone. Uh, it can be derived from a cone and also from a pyramid. It's when it's cut. So the 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 structure or the solid that is formed after her cone is cut is what we refer to as a first term. So when we calculate the volume of a first term, we are going to get the volume of the large cone over the volume of a minus the volume of the smaller cone. That tells you that remember we talked about uh, the volume of a cone, and we said that the volume of a cone is a third by r squared h, where you have a third base area times height. But for you to be able to calculate this volume, we need the height. And when you talk about the height, you're talking about the inner height. And most of the time, you may not be given that height, or for the whole uh, first term, or the radius of the, like the, the lower base or the upper base. So we have to use the linear scale factor to, to get uh, these calculations. Let's do an example so that you can understand what I mean. So you can see this figure represents a first term of base radius 2 centimeters. We don't have this radius on top. And if the height of the cone, which if the height of the cone from which it was cut from was 6 centimeters, calculate the radius of the top surface. So if we extend this first term, to get our previous cone, the way the cone was before, we are told the initial height was 6 centimeters. So it means the, the distance from the apex of the cone to the base, from that is Q to the apex, was 6 centimeters. And we've already been told from Q to S is 3.6. That tells you from the X to the apex is going to be 6 minus 3.6, which gives us. 2.4. So this tells you this small height is going to be 2.4 centimeters. And remember, we said that we cannot be able to calculate the uh, volume because we said the volume is a third pi r big r squared h and it's capital H minus a third pi r squared small h. We need the radiuses. And you can see in this case, we are not given the radius of the smaller cone. So let's calculate using linear scale factor. If you take the height of the bigger cone, which is 6, over the height of the smaller cone, which is 2.4, we notice we don't use 3.6, we use 2.4 instead, because the bigger cone is 6 centimeters, the, the smaller one is 2.4, the one that we have just added, is equal to the radius of the bigger cone, which is 2 centimeters, over the radius of the smaller cone. They are going to give us the same ratio. This is what we call the linear scale factor. You can go back and check from our previous videos. So if you crisscross, it's going to give you 6R is equals to, you're going to multiply 2 times 2.4, which is going to give you 4.8. You divide by 6, you divide by 6, and our radius is going to be 4.8 divided by 6, which is going to give us 0 0.8. So this radius here is 0 0.8. Now with our height and our radiuses in place, now we can be able to use the formula to calculate our volume. So you start with the larger one, which is a third times 22 over 7 times the bigger radius, which is 2 times 2, and then times height of the bigger one is 6. And then minus a third times 22 over 7 times the smaller radius which is 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 and then times small height and when you talk about small height you're not talking about the 3.6 remember we're talking about this the small height of the small cone the one that we just had it which is 2.4 so let's do that calculation 
So by 3, 1, by 3, 2. So this is the same as 22 uh, times 2 times 2 times 2 divided by 7. So it's 176 divided by 7, which gives us 25.143 centimeters cubed minus. Let's carry out this one. So this is... Uh, uh, it's going to be by 3, 1, by 3, 0 0.8. So it's going to be 22 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8, which is going to give us 11.264. Then you divide this by 7, which is going to give us 1.609, and it's centimeters cubed. That means now we are taking the volume of the bigger cone, which is 25.143, and we are subtracting the smaller cone, which is 1.609, which gives us a total of 23.534 centimeters cubed. And that is our volume. Let's look at one more example so that we can uh, get completely. So the figure below shows us frustrum. So if there is that frustrum, you find the volume. Again, you notice frustrum, we have not been given the full frustrum. But we have the radius of, this, of the bigger uh, circle um, surface, the, big, the extended cone. So let's extend that cone so that you can see how that works. So we are going to show the bigger cone. It's important for you to do the sketch so that you can be able to check the height correctly. So we have this radius, the bigger radius, which is 3.3 centimeters. And then we have the smaller one, which is 2.2 centimeters. And then we have this height inside here for the first term, which is 4.8 centimeters, but you do not have the height of the smaller cone. So the larger frustrum, the height of the larger frustrum, we are going to call it capital H. For the smaller one, we can get it, but if the larger one, it means if we give the smaller one small h, the larger one is going to be 4.8 plus h. Okay, so let's use the linear scale factor. The good thing with this question, you've already been given the radius of the bigger circle and the radius of the smaller circle, so we will use that. So it's going to be 3.3 of the larger, that is cone, the radius of the larger cone over the radius of the smaller cone is equals to the height of the larger cone, which we said is 4.8 plus h over the height of the smaller cone, which is h. You'll notice our h is common here. So it tells you that it's possible for us to solve this question. So you cross multiply, which will give you 3.3 h is equals to 2.2 times 4.8 plus h, which is the same as 3.3 h is equals to, you're going to multiply 2.2 times 4.8, which is going to give us 10.56. So 10.56 plus, if you open 2.2 times h, it will be 2.2 h. So we put the light terms together, we can decide 3.3 h, we subtract 2.2 is equals to 10. 0.56 so 3.3 minus 2.2 is going to give us 1.1 so 1.1 h is equals to 10.56 if you want to be left with h one side it's going to be 1.1 divided by 1.1 both sides so our h is going to be 10.56 uh, divided by 1.1 which is going to give us 9.6 so this tells you that the bigger height is going to be 4.8 plus 9.6. So 4.8 plus 9.6 is going to give us 14.4. Now we have everything to calculate our the volume of the fraster. So it's going to be a third by r squared h minus a third for the smaller cone by r squared h. So this is going to be a third times 22 over 7 times our radius of the bigger now cone is 3.3 times 3.3 and then times our bigger heights which we have just calculated is 14.4.
Let's work this out first. So by 3, 1 by 3, 1.1. 1 .1. So this is the same as 22 times 1.1 1 .1 times 3.3 .3, uh, times 14.4, which gives us 1,149.98. And then you divide this by 7, which is going to give us 164. 0.28 centimeters cubed. So we get the volume also of the smaller cone as we did earlier. So it's going to be a third times 22 over 7 times the radius of the smaller cone is 2.2 times 2.2. And then the height of the smaller cone, remember h is 9.6. So don't forget you have already calculated that one. So if we divide by 3, 1 by 3, it's going to be 3.2. So that is going to be 22 times 2.2 times 2.2 times 3.2, which is going to give us 340.74 divided by 7, which is going to give us 48.68 centimeters cubed. So we pick the bigger uh, volume which is 164.28, we subtract 48.68, and we are going to get, so 164.28 minus 48.68 will give us 115.6 centimeters cubed. So this is the volume of the first one. So you see how we were able to calculate it is important you get to remember linear scale factor because it helps a lot in this calculation. The other situations where you can use the area scale factor and the volume scale factor as long as you have the linear scale factor, but you can explore that using the applications that we did in area scale factor and volume scale factor. As long as you have the ratio, you can, for example, if you have the linear scale factor in this case, it's going to be 3.3 .3 divided by 2.2, .2, which is going to give us 1.5. And then you cube this 1.5. If you cube uh, 1.5, it's going to give you 3.375. Three seven five. So this is the volume scale factor. So you can use this volume scale factor to get the volume of the uh, bigger or smaller cone depending on what you have. So explore how we can able to apply the linear scale factor and area scale factor in this question. So that brings us to the end. Uh, check out more revision questions and note on the same in the app. See you in the next lesson.